Very few people know about the extent of the involvement of women in early film culture in the United States. Half of all films in the silent era were written by women. All of the top screenwriters were women. The highest paid screenwriters were all women. Um, and many of the top directors were women. It was a growing industry. It was the popular mass medium. People were going to the film every single day. So there were incredible opportunities for women in Hollywood. Lois Weber is an extraordinary figure in American film history, and she's somebody who very few people know about. Everybody's heard of D.W. Griffith, everybody's heard of Cecil B. DeMille, and in the 1910s, Weber was often mentioned alongside Griffith and DeMille as the three great minds of filmmaking. She was Universal's top director, and she was a top director who made socially engaged films about the key problems of the day. The film that's in the film registry, uh, Where Are My Children, is a film about birth control and abortion, and it was Universal's top moneymaker of 1916. It traveled all around the world. Not only did she make these films about really difficult is issues that we're still grappling with as a culture, she made popular box office successes. When you start looking at the studio era, the 30s and 40s and beyond, then you really do see gender bias. Then it really becomes nearly impossible for women to direct. When I was in graduate school at USC Cinema, a group of us organized a small screening series called Films by Great Women Directors, and somebody wrote across the sign, there are none. Often when you're working with the studios, they'll give you a list of pre-approved directors, and you'll find that there are very few, if in many cases, no women directors on the list. Dorothy Arzner is the only woman to work as a director in the studio era in the 30s and 40s. That's an extraordinary accomplishment. She would always joke that she was one of the guys. She used to dress like a man, she used to hang around with the guys, she used to behave like the guys, and she always said, that's how I got on in the industry, because I was just one of the guys. They didn't think about me as being a woman, I was just a guy directing films. Dance Girl Dance is a film that takes on, in an allegorical way, Hollywood's representation of women. It's about a dancer who aspires to be a serious ballet dancer. She's sort of stuck as the comic act amidst all this sexual exploitation of women. And the climax of the film occurs when she stops in the middle of her performance. <laughs> and looks straight at the audience, which means she looks straight at the camera, and she says, I know you want me to tear my clothes off so as you can look your 50 cents worth. 50 cents for the privilege of staring at a girl the way your wives won't let you. I'm sure they see through you just like we do. It's an extraordinary moment in which we as the audience are confronted uh, and asked to think about what we routinely see in movies, which is the sexual objectification of women. Weber and Arzner were very different women who made very different kinds of films in very different contexts. But if I think about it, what maybe unites them is that they had a unique and singular vision of what they could do that just allowed them to persevere. It's really important to have female filmmakers because women have a different perspective on the world, on our culture, on life. Women filmmakers, we have an awful lot to bring to the screen there are not a whole lot of us and we have this nurturing quality and we have often a different point of view a way of seeing the world a different way of placing characters or placing the camera so let's play around with that let's experiment and that's and i did that with daughters of the dust and for a lot of people it worked and for a lot of people they said whoa what is this <laughs> what are you doing and it was like i'm exploring and i'm telling a story my way. <laughs>